Hello everyone, today is the 12th of April, I'm back on the vlog and it is a lovely day, it's very warm and it's definitely t-shirt weather, I do not need a cardigan as well. <laughs> so for the past week it has been stormy to say the least, it's just been rain and wind and I haven't been here in a week. Well, that's a lie. I came up yesterday very briefly and I dropped off all of my seedlings, well, most of my seedlings and some of the seeds I started. Um, and actually, it was too hot for them in the greenhouse. <laughs> I've just taken my snapdragons and my cabbages out because they had completely flopped over. I've given them a water, put them in the shade, and hopefully they will spring back. Um, I never actually pinch out my snapdragons, but I think I am going to do that today just because they're a little bit, they're getting a little bit long. So I'm going to pinch those out in a bit after they've woken up. <laughs> I'm going to finally, finally plant out my sweet peas, the rest of the pansies and some of my foxgloves, I think. The seedlings or the seeds that I brought with me um, were my nasturtiums all the cosmos, some leeks and onions which are also a little bit too hot, <laughs> and what else, chives, dill, marigolds, borage and I think this is romanesco at the back, yeah some romanesco. So hopefully these will be okay, I've had to give these another water as well just because it's so warm in here. I think I'm gonna get a greenhouse thermometer just to keep an eye on things because yeah, it's getting really warm and like it's only April. This is like the first proper day of warm, nice sunny weather that we've had. And um, yeah, it's very, very hot. So let's have a look around <laughs> the plot, see how things are looking after a week away. So in the wind, my <laughs> water butts, they both blew away, but they're, they're fine. Um, I mean blew away, they like blew, rolled down there basically, <laughs> but they're fine. There's been quite a bit of potato action. I can see quite a few that are sprouting up. Some over there have not, as in basically all the ones over there have not sprouted, so that's a little bit worrying. I hope, I hope they start to sprout soon, otherwise all the rest look like they uh, on their way. Um, the onions are okay. I have noticed a couple of the leaves have been chewed off um, or they might have just snapped in the wind but I don't know. I think somebody's eaten, eaten some of that. <laughs> and the same as the pansies. <laughs> These poor pansies. It looks like somebody really likes to eat the petals and by somebody I mean a slug or a snail. <laughs> There's been absolutely no carrot germination but I think the radishes have actually been germinating but they've been eaten like immediately. There's a little sign that something has sprouted and there's um, it's like lots of little bits of green which I think are just remnants of <laughs> what sprouted and then didn't didn't survive no beetroot either yet and um, no larkspur <laughs> over in the back area i think something has been digging here because i definitely flattened out leveled out the soil and did not leave any lumps behind so i think something's been having a little dig um, there's lots of bindweed popping up over there, so yeah. I am going to keep the pond area just down here as like a wild area. I was thinking about putting another little raised bed in, but I think, no, I'm just going to leave it. Just going to leave it wild flowery. Um, so today's plan is to tackle this area. This is where one of my pumpkin beds is going to go and um, yeah also this pumpkin bed as well. I actually am not going to empty this bin yet because I had a comment on a previous video saying that I could actually make a 
hugel culture is that what it's called hugel huggle culture beds um from some of the rotten wood and especially those sticks so that is what i'm gonna do so the plan is is just like to work around this dalek bin for now and um, then i think i'm going to get some palette collars and have some smaller <laughs> looking at this it just seems <laughs> it seems completely not doable um but i want to put i think four four palette collar beds and palette collars are quite tall actually a lady over there has got some i'll go see what they look like now so this lady has palette collars and you can actually stack them so what i was thinking is getting a few and because they're quite high they're like i think they're at least 20 centimeters high i could fill like the bottom layer with the sticks and materials and um yeah use those as some smaller raised beds and in those smaller raised beds i think i'm gonna put my brassicas because they get a little bit shaded from next door's shed and i think it will be easier to make like a hoop structure over them to keep them netted so yeah i think definitely two possibly four hugel culture <laughs> beds small versions obviously and then i can use some of the sticks and rotten wood to line the bottom of those so yeah that's the plan the front of the plot has absolutely exploded in the last week um yeah <laughs> it's a heck of a lot of nettles and also this is really annoying so when i was clearing the plot i kept finding orange peels and like those net orange bags as in the net bags that oranges come in and um I thought the previous plot holder must just have loved oranges and there was lots of like the orange bags left behind but I couldn't understand where the orange peels were coming from. I've come today, there are orange peels in this bucket. Now I didn't put those there, I don't think a bird would have put them there and I don't think a mouse would have put them there. As far as I know, I don't think mice or birds eat oranges or citrus fruits so i think a human is putting these throwing these orange peels on my plot i just gotta work out who the next person that i see eating an orange on this plot i'm gonna confront them <laughs> so this is what the front of the plot is looking like today and i'm gonna work on the little wildlife wildflower area this patch of nettles here and then if i have time this patch of nettles just along the side of the greenhouse um yeah it's gonna be a full-on afternoon i think so let's get on with it okay it's time to put the sweet peas in i'm gonna put them here and i've also got some new gloves i wonder how long they will actually stay pink <laughs> Also, I really love the smell of strolch. Is that weird? Or does anybody else really like the smell of it? <laughs> Next, I am going to tackle this. Oh, I don't want to do it, but I need to. Also, I've noticed there's a fern sprouting up here. So if I can, I think I'm going to dig that out and put it by the pond because I absolutely love ferns. <laughs> Oh. 
I'm actually going to start over here because it seems like an easier task. This is um, not going to be fun. Whenever I get to like a big stump of nettles, um, there's one here and there's one over there, um, there's always, always red ants and I've been getting nettle stings, they're all up my arm and <laughs> on my hands, but I've had some really painful ones and now I'm pretty convinced they're actually red ant stings and yeah, they're absolutely killing. It felt like a bullet <laughs> uh, just like went into my finger there and uh, there's two on my other hand so I am convinced the red ants are getting me too pain pain anyway this stump it's getting there it's really it's really getting there another like 10 20 minutes and maybe I'll get it out but oh my gosh I'm already so tired I got the ferns out though I'm gonna check there's no like bindweed roots and nettles first and then I think I'm going to plant it by the pond. I've also been collecting like the bigger pieces of wood that I'm finding so we can put like a nice little wood pile by the pond as well. Yeah some pieces over here as well so yeah that'll be the next job just after I've got this thing out. think that would only take me 10 minutes <laughs> half an hour later that patch is done the nettle is there and I'm just gonna leave it there because I don't even have any energy to move that big massive root stump this is supposed to be the communal path by the way but I've never once seen this person and um, if he needs to get over there, I'm sure he can step over the nettles. <laughs> I know we're supposed to keep them clear, but honestly, no one comes up here. of scaffolding was buried underneath. Why? Hello. Where are you going? You're so cute. And you look very small. I have just dug this entire patch over. Um, it was difficult. <laughs> I'm really tired now. What I'm going to do next is rake it all over and level it out. Then I'm going to put the boards, I've got three boards back, um, to make this pumpkin bed.
the bed is roughly put together. I just used the random pieces of wood I had to like hold the boards up. <laughs> um, yeah, I think I'm gonna bring a saw with me next time and actually cut these to um, a better height. And yeah, I think they'll be fine to hold this bed up because yeah, it's very, very rotten, these pieces of wood. But anyway, this is the second pumpkin bed. It is done. And um, where the third pumpkin bed is going to be, it's almost done. So there'll be like a little path here and then the pumpkin bed will be like this. But obviously I need to sort this bin out and all, all of this stuff as well. But it's getting there. I'm so glad I tackled this patch today. It just looks so much better already. I don't know why I thought I could do this as well in a day. <laughs> almost half six now so I've been here for three whole hours and um, yeah that one bed or one and a half beds has taken me that long but I'm not ready to go home yet I don't want to go home <laughs> I like it here I'm not gonna go home yet I am going to do the wildflower area by the pond I think where are we there <laughs> I think it will be quite a quick job. Um, I want to level it out, pull the weeds, put a piece of weed sheet down up to here. Uh, I think I'm going to use these big fat fence posts to edge the um, edge around here, just like one here and like one there. So basically, the soil won't <laughs> spill over. Um, yeah. Let's do it. I just found the smallest toad. Oh, it's so cute. It's so tiny. Oh, I'm sorry, little bean. Okay, I'm gonna go put it, <laughs> put it somewhere safe again. Sorry. Oh my gosh. Ooh, that's a really loud. So you know I said at the very start of the video, Something has been digging up here by the pond because I flattened out the soil and when I got here it was all lumpy. Well, I've realised who's been digging around. I was warned not to grow sweet corn <laughs> on the plot because the mice, the mice always steal the sweet corns. And look at that. Some little mouse has come up here with all the sweet corns and buried them and I've just dug the, the sweet corns up. I'm so sorry little mouse. <laughs> yeah I'm definitely not gonna be sowing any peas direct or sweet corns for that matter because little mice will get them anyway. <laughs> oh my god I thought that was another toad it's just the fattest slug <laughs> in the world. <laughs> I nearly picked it up. <laughs> change of plan I don't have any decent weed sheet left so I'm just gonna cardboard and wood chip the this path like the other bits I'm gonna be doing um, started making a stick pile over there so that will hopefully house some toads I will put them all eventually um, I think I'm gonna put the fox gloves in now because they actually really need to go in they're going quite big and I think I'm just going to put the pansies around it, risk it, because yeah, they, they look ridiculously sad. They need to go in somewhere. Doesn't matter if they get eaten. But yeah, I think I'm going to put the fox gloves there. I do have a couple more, so maybe I'll put like two over there eventually. But yeah, let's get the fox gloves in.
look at this area all nice and clear and ready to go so i put the fox gloves and the pansies in whether they survive they'll probably get eaten but whatever <laughs> it's a start um i did strolch them but um i think i need to put some compost down in this area anyway um that's a job for another day but oh also i forgot to say the compost that i bought for the middle to raise bed raised beds i don't like i really don't like it it was the b and q verve range peat free multi-purpose but i find it really woody and quite chunky um so i'm not gonna buy that again i think i'm gonna go for i think in b and m at the moment it's three for two on the miracle grow peat free with john Ines in Ines innis whatever you however you say it so I'm going to try some of that instead, um, but yeah, we are done. It's such a lovely evening. The sun is setting, all the little birds are singing, and I'm so happy with how this area is looking. Clear, clear. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot we put the sweet peas in today as well. <laughs> Whether they'll survive, oh, some have already fallen over. Oh well. Next time we will definitely work on this bed. That's like more or less the final raised bed apart from the pallet collar idea, but this area needs a lot, lot, lot of work still. So yeah, I think we're gonna do this and I think that is gonna take a hell of a long time to get through. Look at the roots. Oh, I just want to say thank you so 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 much for watching and for subscribing in the last couple of weeks it's been a crazy wild time anyway thank you so so much for watching I will see you again very soon bye